Okay, so let's get started, and we'll, we'll have more time to finish the quiz and do attendance and talk to your neighbors at the, at the end of the lecture when we do last. Okay, so some quick announcements. The mini project one is due tonight. It's by 11.59 p.m., so there's no confusion. Um, about linking to your neighbor's site, so if you can and you have time, try and find out their login and then get that all working. If you can't find their particular login, you don't remember who it was, or you, they're not here today, just use a random uh, letter, just so it links somewhere and it, it works correctly. And we won't break off of that. So the, the letters actually go from AA to something like BM or, or BK or something. So if you use random letters, between those two, uh, those two sets, it should work. You should be able to find someone who has the project done already. Are there any general questions about the mini project that you guys have had? Nothing, nothing personal. If it's personal, we can go over it. We can talk about it at the end of, uh, at the end of class. Anything general or that you think might, other people might want to hear as well? Oh. And just a reminder about submission. For this project, you have to upload all your files via FTP to your personal account. And you also have to submit, you still have to submit a file on our website. And that file should just be a URL containing the, the path to your website. And make sure that that works, because it'd be really important if you went through the work of making everything um, and uploading to your FTP and we just couldn't access it because we didn't have the right address. So try and do that. If, if it doesn't work, I mean, we'll go in there and, and try and find it too. But it's a really good exercise to figure out you know, how, when you upload stuff to your FTP, how the location of those files um, relate to the path of your, of your actual uh, website. And then, I know we've been saying this a lot, but enrollment should really, really, really be finalized by now. So if you're, if you're not enrolled fully in via Calaveras, please see us as soon as possible. No one should be waitlisted at this time. Uh, and a quick note about previous uh, lecture slides. There is just uh, some small typos in the closing tags for the first like two or three pages. I think it was just because um, PowerPoint is is not so great at um, exporting PDF sometimes, but we fixed it, we corrected it. And all it was was just the closing tags were missing a, a backslash. And another reminder, this is actually our second semester, and so there's a whole semester worth of material online right now that you guys can use as additional resources. Um, that's if you guys want more exercises, if you want to use uh, previous lecture slides and stuff like my current lecture slides, it's all on the web. So uh, please check that out if you need additional information. If you need some more help, um, also email us or see us after class and we can also schedule private office hours with you guys um, by request if you need them. The reason for this is because a lot of the web design is built on earlier material that you learned. So HTML and CSS, um, JavaScript and all the things are all going to be built on that. So you really need to have a good foundation of the things now. So if you're a little bit shaky, you're probably okay. But if you're not you know, quite sure about how HTML or CSS works and um, you're having trouble with the quizzes and the mini projects, then please come see us. <clears throat> so today's agenda. We're just going to go over really quickly um, some miscellaneous CSS properties that we weren't able to fit in in our previous lectures. Just margin, padding, boarding, uh, border, and CSS selector, uh, CSS selector uh, hover. And then we're going to go and just quickly look at where we are in the material and what we're going to learn in the next couple of days, or in the next couple of lectures. And then we're going to actually go over how to build a, a web 2.0 website. We're going to look at layouts, HTML uh, element divs, and we're going to learn how to go from a Photoshop mock-up to HTML and CSS code. And then with that, we'll learn a little bit of, about positioning, width and height, and then we'll have a worksheet and a lab. And the worksheet should be pretty brief this time. So, so borders. You guys actually should have already had this in Mini Project 1. I just wanted to review it really quickly because I don't remember if we went over it in the previous slides. The syntax for border uh, isn't too complicated. It basically starts off with the width of, your, of the border itself, um, the style that you want, and this case it's solid, but you can actually set anything that you want down here, and the color. The color is just the hex code. Another thing that you'll notice is for border and actually some other um, CSS properties that we'll look into later, like margin and padding, you can set the different size of your element independently. So you can actually set a border just on the top, just on the right, just on the bottom, etc. I have a question. 
can you put commas in between like one pixel solid or you shouldn't put commas? Uh, I believe you shouldn't put uh, commas between those actually. Okay, all right. Some browsers might. Have you been doing that? Oh, uh, well, just because like the last slides had commas in between. Oh, them. really? Okay. Yeah, so that's. We'll, we'll take a look at the, at the slide again. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Typically, no, you shouldn't have any commas. You should just have spaces. Okay. That should be it. So here are just some quick examples. A uh, solid border, a dash border, and a dotted border. These are really the, the main ones that you're going to find yourself using. The other ones uh, really aren't, aren't used very much. And this is just the corresponding syntax. So margins and padding. So uh, before we get into the nitty gritty details of margin and padding, I just wanted to give you guys a little, uh, insight into, into why we need to be able to control margin and padding. So here's kind of a very basic HTML document, and there are two paragraphs here, paragraph one and paragraph two. And if you <coughs> drag that into your browser, it's just gonna look like this, right? Uh, the first sentence and the second sentence underneath each other. Um, does anyone remember why they're underneath each other? Yeah, they're, exactly. So paragraphs are block level elements, and block level elements have to appear on their own line, right? So there's two elements, and so they're underneath. <clears throat> so to really see what's going on, we're just going to apply a background color to each of the paragraphs. And, that, and when we do that, we can actually see that there's some space between the first paragraph and the second paragraph. And that space is basically due uh, to margins. <clears throat> And so what CSS, or what these properties allow us to do when we set them, is to control that space between margins, uh, between the paragraphs, right, by controlling margins. So the actual properties just look like this. Um, it's going to be the name of the property, margin or padding, and they're interchangeable. So the syntax is exactly the same between margins and padding. And it's going to be either uh, one number, two numbers, or four numbers. If you have just one number, so there's not a second argument, it's gonna use that value for all sides of your, of your element. If you use two, then the first number is gonna specify the vertical spacing, and the second is gonna be the horizontal spacing. If you have four, then it's gonna specify each four of them independently. And, that, and the order for this is top, to the right, to the bottom, to the left. And the difference between margins and padding it's basically that margins are the amount of spacing between two elements that you have, and padding is actually the spacing between an element's border and its contents. Does that make sense? Can you repeat that? So the difference between margins and padding is that padding is the, the, the space difference between two elements, so it's how close they can be together. And when you do padding, padding is the space between the element's border and its contents. Uh, and sorry, if you guys have noticed, I'm a little bit uh, feeling a little bit under the weather, so if you guys can't hear me, if you need me to repeat something, just let me know. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna go over really quickly before we get into uh, the main topic for today is this hover selector. So we've already seen this um, anchor selector, right? This A, and all this does is it selects all the links in our, in our web page, right? So if we do, a colon hover. This does exactly the same thing. It selects all our links in the page, except that when we set attributes within uh, this selector right here, whatever we type, it's only going to apply when the hover state is active. And when I mean the hover state is active, that means when we are actually mousing over that link element. So they're not gonna. So unless you mouse over the, the element, whatever is written within this isn't going to to appear. It's not going to affect your document. Anymore. Do you do hover for paragraphs? Um, you might be able to do hover on some elements. Typically, hover is used uh, mainly for you know like links and things. But I believe that yes, you can apply hover um, to some subset of HTML elements. The particular ones, I'm not sure. Um, so I would just I would just check that out. That's a good question. <coughs> Any other questions? So let's look at this uh, just picture really quickly over here. We're mousing over this third link, and you can see that when we mouse it over, the style of it has changed a little bit, right? Um, there's actually two things happening right now. It's highlighted, and there's a tooltip. So just a quick question uh, to you guys, which one is being set by CSS? The tooltip or the, the highlight? 
the highlight. The highlight. And why why the highlight? Educated guess. Because isn't the tooltip just a title of the link? Exactly. So um, and this is this is a little bit subtle, but the tooltip is more or less kind of context, right? And the highlighting is purely just styling. And um, the way you actually control the tooltip is in HTML with setting the title attribute, right? And this title attribute you can apply to multiple things and just links as well. The particular ones I don't remember what they are, but you can apply them to other things as well. And the CSS code, sorry, it's a little bit low. The CSS code that actually uh, sets this background color and the text color to a different color to a different value is just here below. And then these two properties are going to just take two hex values for the for the color codes. Okay. And I know we haven't gone over you know how to get the hex colors yet. Uh, we're going to go into Photoshop in uh, a little bit, and you can actually read off the colors from there. You know, I believe there's also websites out there that will you know let you select a color and, and then tell you what the corresponding hex values are. Are there any questions? This is actually on, on mini project one, so if you guys need it, it's, it's in the slides. All right, so we've covered actually a bit of material so far. We've covered HTML, CSF, we, CSS. We've talked about you know how to write it, what the syntax is, uh, what it's really good for, and how to use it. And by tonight, you guys should have also already built uh, a fully functional website. Uh, and HTML5 is actually a new iteration of HTML, so you guys are really ahead of the curve. So in that respect, you know, aren't we done with with uh, Web design, I mean, we already know how to build websites that are compliant, accessible. There's nothing else to do, right? So it's time to kind of relax, have some wine, have some beer. Well, not quite yet, right? So, so far, <laughs> so, so far, the websites that we've worked with so far, um, sorry, the websites that we've worked with so far just kind of look like this. And, you know, for the most part, they're not very interesting to look at, right? Um, and if we were just building websites for computers like search engines and we just want to put content, content up on the web, this would actually be okay, right? But that's not really the case. We want to build websites for people. And people like things that are pretty, right? Things that you actually want to look at. Um, and I mean, we've all seen a couple class websites that look like this too. So you should mention to your professors that they really got to step it up a little bit. But uh, we're going to try and transition more to something like this, right? Something that's much more visually appealing um, and where things aren't just one after the other. And that has, it's just much more graphics intensive. So what we're gonna learn in this lecture and tomorrow and then a few, and then a couple lectures later too, or work on a couple, later, a couple lectures later as well, is uh, going from a mock-up like this, so a photograph or a design of a site that you wanna build in HTML and CSS, actually dissecting it into HTML and CSS components, and then applying the background images, and basically, you know, creating exactly what you see there. And then, and then of course, towards the end of uh, end of the class, we're also going to go over JavaScript, PHP, and MySQL, and that's going to create dynamic websites. So right now, we're focusing on making attractive-looking websites, and later we're going to go ahead and look at how to make websites that perform a function for us, that don't just serve up the same content every time. So here's just a quick screenshot of CSS Remix, and this is really much more like it, right? These are these websites are all much more attractive. They're websites that you would actually, you know, if you saw, want to go ahead and explore, look around, um, spend some time on. All right, so let's talk about actually building a website like like that. So the, the steps to really building a website are, are are I mean they're pretty simple and not entirely arbitrary, but you know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. The first part. I think for most of us, for Amber, John, and I, it's inspiration, right? You need to know what you're actually building the site about. And once you have that, you can, um, you know, once you know the topic that you want to build the site on, you can make informed choices, informed choices on <clears throat> your layout and how you want to actually design the style of your site. All Web 2.0 websites, and I don't like using Web 2.0 much because that term is really overused and, you know, it doesn't really mean too much. Um, I'm going to use Web 2.0 in the sense that your sites don't look like those white sites that we talked about, the, that this white document that we looked at earlier, a website that actually is more graphics intensive, a little more interesting to look at, so that's what I'm gonna use the term for. And all those websites almost always start off in Photoshop, because when you're working in Photoshop, it's just much easier to create, well, first